four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Troy Church Divisions, The Week That Was, covering the news and events for the week ending Friday, September 30th, 2022. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Work is set to begin soon on one of Troy University's newest buildings. The construction site next to the Trojan Center will soon be the new home of Troy's College of Health and Human Services. Georgia Clark has the details. What is currently an empty lot surrounded by construction fences will soon be a new state-of-the-art Health and Human Services building for Troy University, one that the Dean of the College of Health and Human Services says will be a big addition to campus. Uh, so the new building has been a long time coming. Um, uh, I think it's been at least two and a half, three years in development, uh, throw in COVID, and it's been a very interesting piece. Uh, we are very excited. Um, we're currently in College View, which is the uh, old College View Elementary School. Um, so some of the things that go with that are interesting. Um, and, and our students and faculty are wonderful. They, they roll with the punches and, and our physical plant does a great job of keeping as best as possible. Um, but having that ability to have bright, shiny, new, um, state of the art is just so exciting uh, and we can't wait. And the state of the art technology will help contribute to the education of the students in the college, especially those in nursing school. Uh, the first floor is going to focus primarily on nursing. It's going to be a nice lobby area for all students, but the back piece uh, is going to open up into a simulation space. So five to six simulation bays that will basically do exactly what they say. They'll simulate opportunities so that uh, our, our students and our faculty can do that. Uh, and then it'll have right at 35 beds that'll uh, be very similar, 17 bays, so hospitals with normal hospital beds. Uh, interior will be just like a nurse's center, nurse's office. So it'll basically be a hospital, perfect on the job training for nurses. Um, the, the technology and health changes every day, uh, and, and that's one of the things we're most excited that we're producing great nurses um, across the state and the region and even in the country, uh, but getting them the best tools to train is just gonna make that even better. Garner adds the building's location will be a bonus as well for a variety of reasons. Uh, yeah, so uh, specifically kinesiology health promotion, we do a lot of the human movement and the sports science uh, along with our athletic training who are, who are tied in. Um, that's going to be visible. We're going to look out over the soccer field. We're going to look out over um, towards the, the towers. That's going to be great. Um, it's also going to be nice that central location. You know, when we do impact or we have student visit days, we've got to bus them over to where our current nursing building is. So just right off the quad, you know, the back of Shackelford. So, you know, two of the prettiest spots on campus, students are going to be around and, and you know, it's recruiting visibility. We can't ask for more. The project is expected to be completed by fall semester 2024. Georgia Clark, Troy Trojan Vision News. All this week, Troy's Office of Career Services offered career exploration opportunities over lunch. Bell Johnson shows us how. Tuesday afternoon, Troy University Career Services hosted the second event of their Lunch and Learn series. The event was a public service panel and hosted representatives of careers such as law enforcement, lobbying, and political science. So this is our Lunch and Learn series. We're holding employer panels where we are discussing various careers that students might be interested in going into. So we started on Monday and we had a STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Today we're having our public service. We'll also have um, helping professions and um, education, so various Lunch and Learns where students can hear about careers they can go into. Students were able to ask questions about the careers they're interested in going into. The panel gave advice about job hunting after graduation and what employers are looking for. I'm actually looking to change to a program that is more law focused because I'm looking now to become a lawyer so it's kind of a huge switch from biomedical sciences but I mainly I wanted to speak with um, the lawyer that was on the panel, which was Miss Natalie Bryant, and I talked to her and I really enjoyed talking with her. Yeah, so I'm looking for more of a graduate school, so like moving on to master's or PhD, looking to be a professor of political science. Yeah, and, uh, and maybe eventually down the line, maybe um, work in politics. The panel's best advice was not just for students to make straight A's, but for students to get out and get involved. So we want students to take away that they're going to do, um, during, during college they need to get experience. So having internships and part-time jobs even that help them develop those skill sets to be a good employee. 
The Lunch and Learn series will continue throughout the week. Career Services is also planning other events to help students know where to look when finding a future job. We would love for our students to continue to follow us on socials, Troy E. Career and Handshake, checking our emails so that they can come to more events like this. And our career fair is October 5th. We've got over 100 employers, so that would be great if they could come attend. Belle Johnson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy University's International Arts Center has a new exhibit on display that features the work of a Troy University graduate and her spouse. And as Mackenzie Foster shows us, some of the work on display has a wiregrass connection. Troy University's International Arts Center has brought in a new exhibit. The new Selected Works exhibit comes from a husband and wife duo, Carolyn Pyfrom and Peter Van Dyke. Pyfrom is a Troy University graduate as well as a native of Elba, Alabama. Although Pyfrom and Van Dyke now live and teach in Philadelphia, the duo takes the time over the summer to connect with Pyfrom's hometown. The duo creates art that connects them to their homes in Philadelphia and Elba. What I think is so beautiful about the work in this show is, is is that you do see these everyday spaces. Um, you know, Peter has a painting of a basement. Um, Carolyn does beautiful still lives. There's also landscapes you wouldn't think to, that would be important enough to have a painting. So when people come to this exhibit, we hope that they can rethink about um, spaces that they also find themselves in and um, just see, just admire the, the talent of these two painters. Although Pyfrom and Van Dyke are united in a marriage, their separate art pieces use different colors, textures, and techniques to bring their art to life. The Tiger, the Cow, and the Canine by Peter Van Dyke is a beautiful example of his work and how um, he, he uses his lines. Um, they're very structured and he finds very interesting ways to represent objects. Um, as you can see, this skeleton doesn't have all the lines. You get kind of left to your imagination to fill in the blanks, but he really captures the, um, the essence of shadow, um, shade, and light, and, and that contrast, and he has um, a very beautiful way with color. This is Family Portrait by Carolyn Pyfrom, and um, as you see, it's not a traditional uh, family portrait, which you would consider a pose setting. Um, I, I really enjoy it because it is showing the family. Um, Carolyn is up here being reflected in a mirror. And so you can see her, she's working on the painting in theory. And then her husband, Peter, the other artist that's in this exhibit, um, is relaxing on the couch and that's their son, Sam. What I really appreciate about this um, uh, painting, this diptych, uh, is that it um, it really does capture family life. This is this is the real. Pyfrom and Van Dyke will be visiting Troy University to attend their exhibit reception, as well as guest lecturing some of the art classes on campus. Take a short break, but when we return, we'll see how the International Arts Center shifted from the visual arts to the musical arts. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. While it's normally the artwork inside the International Arts Center that attracts visitors, it was some entertainment outside of the center that was the focus on Monday night. Savannah Sapp has the story. 
days, music comes in infinite amounts of genres and styles. The Troy Arts Council sought to bring a variety of tunes to campus with a free flamenco concert at the International Arts Center. The Maharaja Flamenco Trio spent their night serenading students and Troy locals with their many musical talents. Flamenco is a style of music and dance originating from Spain and some theorists even believe that its origins date back to the 1700s. But in the year 2022, the Maharaja Trio brings a taste of their culture to our community. The trio is made up of three musicians, all of varying backgrounds, and the group seeks to educate their audiences through the experience of flamenco while discussing the intertwining of culture, music, well-being, and creativity. These are such amazing musicians, and, and frankly, we don't have this in Troy, so if we don't have something, I think it's uh, one of the duties and responsibilities of the Troy Arts Council to bring this great music to us. To, to have this culture come to you and broaden your horizons and your experiences is very important as part of really the college experience and part of the oh, life experience as well. Camwell adds that the Troy Arts Council works to immerse locals in cultures that they might not be familiar with. In doing this, the council hopes to broaden the horizons of their community. One of the main um, tenets of the Troy Arts Council is to be able to bring things that will hopefully open up people's eyes, people's ears, that you know, uh, that, that you don't, you turn on the radio and typically you don't get to hear this stuff. Uh, um, so one of the things that's exciting to us is finding great art and bringing to the great people of Troy, Alabama. The Troy Arts Council is not stopping here. With a Christmas spectacular set for December and a membership drive in January, they have many events planned to bring more exciting experiences to the city of Troy. Savannah Sapp, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, all are well-known film series with probably even more well-known soundtracks. And as Georgia Clark shows us, some of those classic film scores were on the playlist of the symphony band Tuesday night as they focused on the work of composer John Williams. The Perfect Encore is ironically one of the most recognized opening titles in movie history, and that is how the Troy University Symphony Band closed out their Masterworks concert Tuesday night. The concert, conducted by Troy's director of bands, Dr. Mark Walker, honored the works of John Williams, who has composed some of cinema's greatest soundtracks. This is John Williams' 90th year, and there is nobody more masterful in the field of composition living at this point in the uh, 21st century or the latter half of the 20th century. There's nobody more influential or important in terms of films and things like that than John Williams. And the music is timeless, and it's wonderful music filled with beautiful melodies and wonderful, wonderful orchestration, and uh, it really speaks to the performance and the audience alike. The scores of Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Harry Potter are all works from John Williams' impressive career, and hearing these classic movie themes live is something that brings back memories of youthful times. I think it, you know, I think it brings back some nostalgia to some of their favorite movies that they may have saw when, when they were a kid. You know, I was a little kid when I saw Star Wars and and, uh, and Indiana Jones myself. You know, in the theater with my parents. So when I hear that music, that brings back fond memories of being a kid and going to see one, these wonderful movies. And the the diversity of the movies and the subject matter and John Williams' compositional skill is almost unlimited, which is really nice that we are able to feature one composer, but we have so many styles of music. The city of Troy is no stranger to hosting events for the community, and last Thursday's event gave participants the opportunity to rely on the luck of the draw in hopes to win some prizes. Claudia Peppenhorst has the story. Our next number is 075. The Troy community got the opportunity to partake in a night of luck and fun with Bingo Night hosted by the city of Troy on the downtown square. Tonight we're actually having bingo, which is super fun. It's our second bingo of the semester. So tonight we will be having community people coming around and we'll be calling out bingo and just having a good time. There'll be some prizes to give out, so it'll be fun. Participants in Bingo Night had the opportunity to win some prizes from local businesses if they were so lucky to call out bingo. 
Porter says these events not only help people get involved in the community, but also shed some light on the downtown local businesses. I think it's really important because it really just brings people down to downtown Troy and gives people the opportunity to not only get to know us, but also our downtown better. And it gets people the opportunity to engage with our downtown businesses and restaurants. While there may be a stereotype for what age group plays bingo, there was a variety of people from all ages participating in the event. With the city hosting several downtown events throughout the year, Porter says this event allows people to relax and enjoy the downtown area as well as the Troy community. We have tons of events throughout the fall semester, but this one's really fun because it's kind of one of our more chill events. So people are able to just come and bring their families and just hang out. Um, it also helps our businesses because a lot of people will come and play bingo and then we'll go eat at one of our businesses down here. So it's just a fun time for everyone. Um, we have people from all ages come and kids play. It's, it's just fun. We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll have highlights from the Trojan football team's record-breaking win over Marshall. It's coming up right after this, so stay tuned. dream but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it do everything in our power to learn to lead at troy university we teach everyone to be leaders in their field we're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change After a heartbreaking loss to App State on the road, the Trojan football team looked to rebound on Saturday when they hosted Marshall at the Vet. Jack and Lambert has the highlights. The Troy Trojans returned to Veterans Memorial Stadium for a Saturday night matchup against Marshall, who is just two weeks removed from beating the eighth ranked team in the nation. Um, two weeks ago tonight, I stood here before you disgruntled with how we played against Alabama and m in the first half. Uh, and two weeks ago tonight, Marshall beat Notre Dame. And uh, you fast forward two weeks, and um, I, I, you know we beat them. I don't think it, they, you know, I don't think it was really that close. The scoreboard, I, thought, I felt like um, we could have we could have pulled away in some areas that we didn't execute as well really early. Um, but but uh, they're a good football team. They're physical. They're tough. They're big. I mean, they're they're as big of a team as we'll play all year maybe. Troy got off to a great start with a 50-yard pass from Gunnar Watson to Marcus Rogers. However, the Trojans coughed up the ball later that possession on third and 11. The thundering herd would turn the ball over soon after a sack by T.J. Jackson, resulting in a fumble that was taken back for a scoop and score by defensive tackle Buda Jones. Big time play. That really, you know, that changed the momentum of the game early in the game because we got down, right? We don't, we turn the ball over, don't convert there. Uh, in the red zone, and then we score on defense. That's a that's that's really making a statement in stopping the momentum they had and creating momentum for us. But really big play by him. The defense would continue to dominate the entire game for the Trojans, with one of the stars being linebacker Carlton Marshall, who on his third tackle of the game became the all-time tackles leader in Sun Belt Conference history. What can I say, man? I mean, he's he's a stud. He's a fighter. Um, I'll take him every every day and twice on Sunday. I'm going to see if the NCAA will let me have a seventh, eighth, and ninth year with him. Led by Marshall, the defense would hold the thundering herd scoreless for the entire first half. On special teams, Brooks Buse made a field goal, putting Troy up 10-0 near the end of the first quarter. Both offenses stalled in the second quarter, and Marshall lined up for a field goal with seconds left before halftime. But Kayla Bransaw blocked the kick, keeping Troy's lead going into the half. Out of halftime, the Thundering Herd found the end zone on offense after their defense came up with an interception. This also marked the only offensive touchdown of the game. 
The score was 10 to 7 going into the fourth, and once again, Brooks Buse would step up, scoring two field goals to win the game 16 to 7. Although the Trojans came out on top, the team has yet to put together a complete game, according to Coach Summerall, who believes the best is yet to come. We're, we are very, very, very uh, far away from being the best we can be right now. We're not there yet. Um, we'll get there. Uh, I want us to get there immediately. I, I'd like for it to happen today, um, but um, we, we still have a lot of room for growth, a lot of improvement. You no, know, we don't like to pat, pat ourselves on the back. We know we have a lot, a long ways to go. And like Coach Summerall said, we haven't made our, played our best ball yet, so uh, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Jacqueline Lambert, Troy, Trojan Vision News. After a comfort behind win to open their series against Louisiana, the Trojan volleyball team tried to make it a sweep in game two. Dylan Seymour has all the action from Trojan Arena. The Trojan volleyball team is hosting the Louisiana Raging Cajuns in Trojan Arena at 6 p.m. The Trojans are coming in at 7-6 and they're looking to get a win in their home arena. In Friday's matchup against the Raging Cajuns, the Trojans fell in a sweep. Head coach Josh Lauer says a better focus and more routine schedule will help the team moving forward. Um, thought that our competitive, our competitive focus coming out tonight needs to get a little bit better. Um, things that we've talked about as a team, I think we're up to the challenge. And so, yeah, I think it'll be good for us to get back in a good practice routine as well. We need that. It's been a little chaotic the last couple weeks. Um, and so I think getting into a more normal routine now that we're in conference play is going to be really, really good for, for all of our players. Lauer says that even though the focus wasn't there, things are slowly coming together for the Trojans. I mean, I think that Julie Brooks has been getting better and better um, every week. You know, started a little slow, but um, has really been coming along. I think that, um, I think our serving's been really good at different times. And, you know, when we serve well, it uh, puts us in a much better position. We didn't serve well tonight, so that affected us. You know, so I think that we see some of the pieces coming together. You know, we've got to come out with a good competitive focus, you know, from, from jump um, for every point. And, um, you know, that's something that we can work on every day in practice. The Trojans will have plenty of rest in between games. The next game for the Trojans will be this Friday in Hattiesburg, Mississippi against Southern Miss. The Trojans will head back to Trojan Arena on October 6th to take on Marshall. Hey, we'll be back uh, for Marshall October 6th and 7th. Um, and, you know, hope everybody come out and support us and uh, come see, you know, uh, a fun show in the arena. Dylan Seymour, Troy Trojan Vision News. It's time for our last break. When we return, we'll see how choice students can prepare for the first in-person career fair in two years. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we offer leadership opportunities from day one. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. Do you have what it takes to change the world? Troy University's All Majors Career Fair is returning to an in-person format next week. We'll learn more about the change and how students can prepare for the fair in this week's Trojan Talk. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. With me today is Lauren Cole, Director of Career Services here at Troy University, here to talk about the All Majors Career Fair. Lauren, thanks for joining us here today. Sure. And uh, talking about the career fair and something different but old and new again. Right. It's back in person. Yes, in we're person excited. career fair. Yes. So, so talk a little bit about uh, bringing it back in person and having it outside the virtual format and back in person again. Sure, so we are gonna be in Trojan Arena, so we're excited about that around the concourse, but yeah, being back in person has set a record actually for our number of employers who have registered. So we know employers are excited about meeting our students and seeing our students. We're gonna have about 100 employers there. Mm. So that, that really breaks our records. Um, we're excited that it's in person and we just wanna remind students how to do that and to do that well. And of course, let's talk a little about that in preparation of that on what students need to do to prepare because there are a lot of things. I know we go, we can do 
30 minutes probably talking sure. about all things, maybe an hour, but briefly talk about some of the things that they need to be looking out for in preparation for this career fair. Well, first of all, we want them to make a good impression and that first comes with a professional attire and a professional look. So just prepare ahead of time to have some clothing that is um, business professional. We have a career closet on campus if we can help students with that. But then perfecting the, the everything they need, like their resumes, their elevator pitch, that introduction to the employer as they walk up to them. If these employers are going to be seeing hundreds of students, you really need to perfect that so when you introduce yourself, you can really stick out in their mind as a, as a quality candidate. And of course, one of the things that a lot of students don't realize in this preparation and with that elevator pitch is this could be potentially the first job interview that they have at this point. Right. They are making notes on the resumes that the students are giving them, and that is going to be their follow-up. So you're kind of going in the follow-up pile or the no pile. And then students, I want we want lower classmen to come to you because there are a lot of these employers who have registered under internships, seeking internships as well. So there's really anything, there's a lot of opportunities for any student. And, and that's one of those things, a lot of students when they go there, they may not have a directed focus on what right. they need to do, but the good thing is with 100 employers there, you know, they have the potential to maybe find something that will suit their needs. Definitely. So what I want students to do first is to go on Handshake and mm -hmm. look at all the employers that are coming. So you're going to see niche employers that might be relative to um, TV production, ex nursing, etc. But then you're going to see some really big companies, some employers like Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, they're hiring a variety of majors. So I would encourage them to go online, look on Handshake at who's coming and really whittle it down to maybe 20 employers that they want to make sure they give their best impression to and then go talk to everybody else too just to see what resources are out there. And of course one of the things we talked about preparation but but resume and that's one of the things even though the elevator pitch is important to stick out but having the proper resume that and, and having copies of that resume a lot of students are in this digital mindset right. but this is that one time you're going to have to have a piece of paper you, in your hand. Right, and we would like it to be on the nicer resume mm -hmm. paper that it's been reviewed by us. So going on our website, we've got samples there and some tips that we like to give students. So go ahead and compare yours, what you have, with what we suggest. If they want to send it to us for a resume review, we can do that as well. And of course, in, and in that regard, the, the office is available for some one-on-one -on -one yes. at any time to help you with any of this aspect. We are. Right? Yeah. Um, they can make an appointment with us mm -hmm. in Handshake for the career closet, resume reviews, mock interviews, Review, job search assistance, career counseling, but we also, I wanted to mention, there we're going to do free professional headshots again at the career okay. fair. So students can use those for their LinkedIn accounts, any of their professional, their social media. We would love for them to take advantage of that as well. And, and we talked about the resume, you work on that, and we talked about that elevator pitch, but mm -hmm. why, how, tell, talk about the importance of how a student presents themselves at the career fair. We're not just talking about a dress, but their, their overall attitude and the way they handle themselves in front of these employers right. and why that's important mm -hmm. in, this, in this regard. Well, I will say that I know that students, it can be intimidating. So this, I would, I would suggest to the students that there's probably no greater opportunity to walk in a room and be in front of that many employers well, after they graduate, they're not going to have that opportunity. To, so take advantage of it while you can, but it is slightly intimidating. So we get that. Go to a few employers that you're just getting to know. Maybe it's not high stakes for you. It might be something, but maybe not. Practice on a few. Mm -hmm. Get comfortable talking to those employers and then move on to those top 10 or 20 that you really would like to capitalize on. And of course, once again, they can find out all that information on Handshake uh, to be able to whittle that yes. down and be able to know who they want to talk Have to. Have some familiarity with the employers that you really want to mm -hmm. talk to. Just know the basic information on their website. Don't walk up, introduce yourself and say, what do you do? Have some awareness of what the employer does beforehand. Nothing, nothing can shoot you in the foot <laughs> about, <laughs> right. about being uh, ignorant of who it is you're talking to. Right. Because if right. You, especially if you want a job from that person, your knowledge will help Get your foot in the That's door. That's right, and there's so much information out there on websites, LinkedIn pages, et cetera, that it's accessible. So students try to check it out ahead of time. All right, once again, now when is the career fair? We already heard Trojan Arena tell us a day and time. Yes, October 5th, 11 to 2 p.m. So it's come and go, but I plan on spending at least an hour, and we welcome any student to come, get a free headshot, visit with some employers, and um, walk away with an internship or a job maybe. And then uh, come by and see you all in uh, Eldridge Hall or uh, hop on Handshake to uh, help Make out an anytime between there. So, yes, absolutely. Right. Thank you very much okay, for joining us you. and good luck with the fair. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk.
And that's the week that was. To find out what's happening on a daily basis, you can tune in to Troy Troy Division News at 5, 6, 30, and 10, 30, Monday through Friday, or visit us anytime on the Trojan Vision blog at today.troy.edu slash Trojan Vision. Until next time, have a good week.